Hi guys, this is Matthias, and I'm coming at you here with that video that so many of you H1Z1 players have been asking me about for quite a while now. And it's the settings that I have in the useroptions.ini file. So now to make any changes in this file, of course, you have to find it first. And the easiest way to do that is through Steam. Click on Games, uh, find H1Z1, and go to Properties. And once you've done that, you want to go to Local Files, which is in the middle. And then the top one out of the four options there, Browse Local Files. Now being that this is in alphabetic order, you have to scroll down a bit and then just open it in any preferred program. I'm using WordPad and it works fine. And with some games, I'm not sure if that's the case with H1C1, but if you're opening this in the wrong program, then your changes is not going to be saved. So if this is causing you any trouble, at least you can try WordPad. It will probably work just as well for you as it does for me. So starting off from the top here, uh, most of these changes have I've never done anything to. It has to do with your uh, resolution, and I have a 1920 by 1080 p monitor. And since I never play windowed, I don't really care about my windowed resolution. As you can see, it says on mode full screen and full screen mode full screen. And there's a lot of players that place this game in windowed mode, and whatever you benefit from it, I'm not entirely sure but um, I've never done that. Now, the very last row in the first section, the one called HD Pixel Plus, this is your pixel quality. It basically decides how many pixels that is allowed, and this will affect both your performance and how the game looks. Now, this is something you might want to fiddle around with before you decide, because of how much it affects the overall looks of your game, and you don't have to go to, into your user options any file and change it here where we are in the video. You can do this in-game in settings. One, the way I've set it, is high. If you want it on Ultra, you have to set it to 1.1, 0.9 uh, is medium, and then it goes all the way down to 0.5. So now the next section under Rendering, it starts with Effects Quality, and this is a quite deciding settings actually. And for, In all other games that I've ever played actually, I've always wanted this as low as possible, because all the effects normally in almost every shooter out there, all this will do to a player like me, is blur the vision or make it harder for me to see my opponent. And even though it makes the games look better, having any kinds of effects on in any shooter games has always been a drawback. But not in H1Z1. And that is because in H1Z1 you need these effects on in order to tell where your bullets go. And you will see this on the impact of whatever the bullets hit, which hopefully is going to be an opponent. I also want to mention right away that there's another setting that we will talk about soon called Particle Level of Detail that also affects what this example shows. Next up here is Texture Quality and 3, which I have, is actually low. You might think it's high or something, but the fact of the matter is that it starts from 0, which is ultra, and then work its way up to 3, which is low. It's, uh, I don't know, for whatever reason it's backwards when it comes to the textures. Now, if I'm not mistaken, I believe that this is the settings that, if you have it on low, it will also allow you to see your opponents more clearly at a distance. And as I'm sure you know, once a player is far enough away from you, its model turns completely black. And that's what you want to see as clearly as possible at distance. Shadow quality, I have that on zero. This means that the shadows are going to be turned off. And this has a quite big impact on your performance. Now, the fact that it affects uh, how the game looks goes without saying. And that uh, in some situations, being able to see your opponent's shadow is, of course, going to be beneficial for you. But uh, the performance hits that I have seen having shadows on is just too big. I actually turned shadows off very early on playing Planetside 2, which is, you know another MMO shooter made on the Forgelight engine. And uh, turning shadows off will, in many situations, make your game look a lot brighter, which can be a bit annoying, actually, but the benefits overweight the drawbacks by far when it comes to turning off shadows. Flora quality, which is under shadows, is, you know, grass, bushes, stuff like that. It's related to the environment. I have it on one, but, uh, you know, maybe I'll actually turn this down to zero. In all honesty, that's what I recommend. I've had it on one for quite some time. And uh, I guess it's just time to check out what it looks like. And it will, of course, be almost impossible for me to determine by how much, if at all, this affects my performance. So now next line or next row, render distance. Now this has a massive impact on your performance and how the game looks at distance, of course. Uh, at the moment it's set to 1750, which I'm a little bit surprised over, but yeah, I keep changing that if I play Battle Royale. And that's because I want to have uh, the render distance at around 2000 when I spawn in. 
because uh, that will allow you to see the ground from uh, the very from, from the very time that you drop in your parachute and then as soon as I feel comfortable I lower the render distance to around a thousand I've tried lower than a thousand but I get some graphical glitches that are really really weird and uh, I don't know what they are all about here you see yeah, 2000 uh, lowering it to 1100 at this point in time and render distance is uh, one of those things uh, like I mentioned earlier that uh, was one of the most important uh, things to change in Planet Site 2 and it has a big impact in this game too uh, for obvious reasons it's really great that you can change this in game for a long time we didn't have a render distance slider in Planet Site 2 I'm not sure when they implemented it in H1Z1 to be perfectly honest but it is great that it's there. Important to notice about render distance though is that it doesn't in any way affect uh, at what render, at what distance you can see players. This is only the environment. And what the game does is that uh, whatever uh, number you set it to, anything further away than that is going to just be grayed out. It's going to be look like a gray fog, so to speak. And if you're in town like Pleasant, as what I'm right now, lowering your render distance to 350 uh, is probably not a problem unless you're having the same bugs as I have. But uh, being able to see cars, for example, at the long distance is something that I really value and also I've had problems seeing the um, bomb planes or the airdrop planes when I lowered my render distance even at the thousand actually so yeah I definitely recommend you to try out whatever render distance you are comfortable with being that it is so easy to adjust The next row is Gamma, and by default this is set to 0 0.5, or well, 0 0.500,000. For a while, and especially for survival, I set this to 0 0.75, and that's because of the darkness at night. But being that I'm an NVIDIA user, I used the NVIDIA control panel for that instead, and I adjust it. When night comes, I just uh, up the Gamma a little bit, and I'm just fine. This works just as well in Rust, as a matter of fact. Now the next line is something that I'm going to take some time to explain. Maximum FPS is a frame rate limiter, and there's a lot of people that confuse this with the vertical sync. So let me explain the differences here. The purpose with vertical sync is to synchronize your frame rate with the refresh rate of your monitor. For a long time, 60 has been kind of standard, but lately it has been more and more common with higher refresh rate, such as, for example, 144. Now, the main reason why you would want to have this synchronization is to avoid something called screen tearing. And as much as I can sometimes see screen tearing in my videos, I rarely or almost never have that in game, actually. But there are a few more other reasons, and one of them being that um, some games, or in some game engines actually, the games just don't function if your frame rate goes too high. Uh, one good example of that is uh, Fallout, or Fallout 4 Garrett. is the most recent one. What? I scared. Oh, sorry about that, man. <laughs> sorry, man. Good luck in the next round. Now, in a perfect world where vertical sync functioned properly, it would be a great thing, but it really isn't. Vertical Sync has a lot of negative side effects, one of them being mouse input lag. You get an extremely laggy sensation playing with Vertical Sync, even when it works as intended. But what happens is that it goes from really bad to worse. If uh, your computer can't render enough frames to match your uh, monitor's refresh rate, because when that happens, it becomes so laggy that it's basically unplayable. So now the problems with vertical sync is probably why frame rate limiters appeared in the first place. Because frame rate limiters can be used for the same purpose. You limit your frame rate to your monitor's refresh rate instead of synchronizing it. And in almost all cases, this works a lot better. And by working better, it means that it has less side effects, such as mouse input lag or just a, a laggy experience in general. Now, a lot of players would believe, and I also used to believe for years, that your best experience would be having as many frames as possible at all times. This is normally wrong. The problem with not limiting your frame rate is that you will have massive fluctuations. When you're all by yourself and there's nothing going on around you, you will have a fantastic frame rate and the game will feel smooth and lag-free. And then once you get into combat and there's a lot of shit happening around you, people are shooting in every direction, there are explosions, your frame rate will drop, and depending on what happens around you, your frame rate will be very unstable. And this can make your game feel a lot more laggy than if you limit your frame rate. And the thing about this is that when you have these laggy sensations, this will happen when you need your performance the most. When you're trying to get your aim on target and you try to shoot somebody, and sometimes it happens for just a split second, and that's when it matters. And unfortunately, when I see people talking about frame rate and uh, performance, I see a lot of people that measure their frame rate in the wrong situations. 
in situations that doesn't matter. In H1Z1, if you play one battle royale, for example, a lot of your playing time is going to be where you are all by yourself, either looking for people or trying to avoid them. And this is the kind of situations where a lot of people actually look at their frame rate, and because they are checking it when there's nothing going on, they get the wrong readings, meaning that they will get higher frame rate than they would actually have when their frame rate matters. Now, for years, I have been using a variety of different frame rate limiters in different uh, games. And even in H1Z1, I've had a lot of good experiences using frame rate limiters. Uh, mostly I've been using the one that's in-game. It's worked fine both in H1Z1 and in PlayStation 2. But I will also show you NVIDIA Inspector, a program that I've been using in other games. However, in H1Z1, the main problem, and this is a big problem if you play Battle Royale, your in-game loading time is dependent on your frame rate, meaning that if you limit it, your loading time is going to be longer depending on what you limit it to. And this means that you're going to have a longer time spawning into your parachute, giving you a massive disadvantage in the start of a match. So now why your frame rate affects your loading time, I have no idea. Maybe this is more common than I actually know. Maybe this is uh, common in a lot of games, but it feels like something that should have been fixed decades ago. Now, limiting your frame rate also means that you're not going to have your system running at maximum at all times. And this can be, of course, good for many reasons. Um, it will keep your system cooler and it will probably show on your electricity bills if you play a lot. It's also very possible that some of your components in your computer will last longer if they're not pushed to the limit every time you play. Um, I'm not an expert in these kinds of things, but uh, for some of you guys who are watching this, this might actually be worth considering. Anyway, I'll just quickly show you NVIDIA Inspector here. This is what it looks like. You click on this little tool symbol to the right here, and you get another window popping up. And here is where you can find the frame rate limiter. Uh, frame rate limiter off. You see me clicking on it right there. And scrolling down here, you can see how uh, this is actually meant to uh, improve the negative side effects with vertical sync, such as input lag. So if you limit your frame rate to 58 frames per second when you are running a vSync at 60 hertz, it might improve input lag. And uh, yeah, there's a couple of other numbers being mentioned here as well. So now once you have decided what you want to limit your frame rates to, you just apply changes. That's important, otherwise uh, the changes will not take effect. Um, I will turn it off again, of course, because I don't use it at the moment. So now under maximum FPS, you have use LOD, it says, means level of detail. And I'll be honest, I am very uncertain about what is the best choice here. Now, it has to do with um, how uh, certain objects and certain things look at the distance. And I think it's actually better to have it set to one, because I think that will actually lower your level of detail at the distance. Uh, giving you a few more frames per second. On the other hand though, you want to be able to see your opponents as clearly as possible at distance, so whether or not this is a side effect you're gonna have to live with, I'm not sure about. I hope somebody can explain this better in the comment section below or on Reddit where I will post this video as well. Next you have smoothing, and this will kind of stabilize your frame rate, but uh, it will of course drop it a little bit. And this is there for basically the same reason as I tried to explain about vertical sync and frame rate limiter. Honestly, I'm not sure whether or not this does a good job or not, but it might be worth trying out. Model quality is about uh, how good uh, players look and uh, yeah, the textures like uh, the skins and all that stuff. I have it set to three just because I'm making videos, but that's not what I recommend if you are looking for performance. I would suggest that you lower this. Next one is Fog Shadows Enable. I have this on, but I recommend you to turn this off. It has to do with fog and gas and all that stuff about how it looks. But if you're looking for performance again, you want to turn this off, set it to zero. The next one, AO, stands for Ambient Occlusion. And this is a visual effect that um, I believe it's pretty heavy on your system. I'm not entirely sure, but it has to do with m uh, making light and certain textures more realistic, something that is quite challenging for game designers and some such. And it was actually used for the first time ever in 2001 in the film Pearl Harbor. Now the next thing, vertical field of a view. Uh, mine is 65, that's quite low actually. A lot of people really don't like the settings as low as that. I would say try 70 and uh, see what that feels like. But just keep in mind that you will get lower frame rate the higher your field of view is. Lighting quality, this will affect your performance. 
If you want to turn it off, you set it to zero. And even though that's not what I have myself, that is what I recommend. V-Sync or Vertical Sync, I have it to zero and let's not talk about that anymore. The next one, however, particles is very important. I have mine to one. I think most people would probably recommend two. And you want to have this on because you want to be able to see the bullet's impact at the range. And for me, it's enough to have it on one, but you probably want to try it on two at least before you decide and uh, see what difference it makes when you're shooting at range, when you're trying to adjust your aim based on the bullet's impact. So now once we're done with the rendering, I would like to skip everything down all the way to general and there's quite a lot to skip, so I'll just scroll down here. And if there is anything that you need to adjust here or anything you have questions about with the things that I'm skipping here, I'm sorry, I'm not the right person to ask. But this section here, general or under general, um, it is uh, something that you probably want to uh, take a little time to fix. Now, first and foremost, you should not copy what I have. It will probably not work very well for you. I have actually very low mouse sensitivity. My mouse is set to 800 dpi, and in every game that I play, every shooter game that is, I make sure that I need to move my hand 38 centimeters from left to right in order to make a 360 turnaround. Now, for most of you watching this video, this is a lot lower than you have. This is just personal preference, nothing else. However, the three less rows in this section you might not have if you haven't been fiddling around with the, the user options I need file before. And all you need to do is to just copy and paste them in. Now starting with mouse raw input set to 1, this will make sure that your mouse input is raw, meaning that it will not be affected by any other settings such as in Windows and whatever. And unless you know with certainty that you want mouse smoothing, you probably don't want mouse smoothing. Now, raw mouse input, or mouse raw input as it's called here, is meant to disable any kind of acceleration or deceleration, and it is very unusual that any experienced first-person shooter uses any kind of acceleration. But there are programmers that uses this, but uh, if you want to use it, you, may, you really have to make sure that it is set correctly, and it's probably going to be very hard to get your settings the way you want them when you switch from one game to another. So as I just said, I don't want the mouse smoothing, so I have it off. And the last row, reduce input lag, I have that on. Unfortunately, this doesn't really help for me, and I'm not sure if there's any way to fix it. And the thing is that uh, I sometimes feel a delay when I press the left mouse button, compared to when my uh, character shoots. And it makes it really, really hard to uh, land those uh, sniper shots in some situations, but it's even worse with a shotgun. Now, of course, in any shoot game, you want the gun to fire at the exact moment when you press the left mouse button. For whatever reason, that doesn't happen in H1Z1, at least not to me. Fortunately, though, there are quite few players that experience this as far as I know. And hopefully, you don't have this problem either. Anyway, I really hope this video was helpful. I'm not in any way pretending to be an expert at this, but I'm trying to help as best as I can. So yeah, thank you all for watching. Good game.